Okay, so another thing that we want to talk about is the SAV and that is the virtual ASA. If you come over here to the Cisco homepage and then we go to the product supports and the security and then if you just scroll down a little bit here and view all security products and then on in this page scroll down a bit here you'll find that we have our firewall listed down here Cisco Adaptive Security Appliances and I will just go to the data sheet here at a glance, uh, this will bring us to the data sheet of the virtual appliance. And of course, you are going to want to be familiar with this. It is nice having this virtual appliance available to you. Essentially, it comes in different models that would meet the needs of various environments. So we have the ASA V5 that takes 2 GB of memory and will give you 100 MB per second throughput. So smaller environments, obviously, then we have the ASA V10 and which is 2 GB of memory and gives me 1 GB per second of throughput. And then we have the ASA V30, which does 8 GB of memory and then gives 2 GB per seconds of throughput. Now, you have to remember that this is something that we would implement on top of a hypervisor so it gives you a little bit of an idea what this would looks like we have our hypervisor which could be esxi and then on top of that hypervisor we have a virtual switch and then connected to that virtual switch we have a number of virtual machines and so one of those virtual machines or rather two of those virtual machines could be sav now the ASAV can operate in failover pair so we can have an active and standby and we can use our virtual switch to direct traffic from one VMs to the other one. Now the ASAV can operate in failover pair so we can have an active and standby and we can use our virtual switch to direct traffic from one VM so that when we have traffic that's on maybe one port group that wants to talk to someone on the other side they have to pass the traffic through the ASAV before their traffic can reach the VM destination that is in the same ESXi server so this give me the ability to handle my firewall features right there on that server without actually having to drop it out to the hardware and it to an ASA and then kick it to another subnet and run it back. We can handle that all inside the virtual switch. So definitely a beneficial feature. The ASA we do support 10 interfaces or 10 virtual NICs that you can have connected to different port groups there. We have the ability to do VLANs with one Q tags. We can also do VXLAN. We can have up to 200 VLANs or 1000 VXLAN sub-interfaces. So it does have some definite capability there. It works great in our data center and it also integrates with Cisco ACI. So again, a definite benefit, a virtual appliance, something that you can spin up and test with. It does operate in an unlicensed version or unlicensed state which does limit, limit your throughput and you can get a little message that keeps popping up saying this is in licensed but at least give you something that you can study on that you can work with will do a quick implementation here and install install an ASAV on ESXi so you can see what that looks like and then we will run it a little bit but it support most of the same features that the hardware appliance support one example of something it would support through would be clustering. It wouldn't be supporting the clustering. You would need the hardware appliance to do clustering, but that's just one example. So to see ASAV is not uncommon these days, but let's get into the features and spend some time there talking about the features that are going to be support on your hardware appliance. 
as well as the ASAV. So the features of the Cisco ASA. So your Cisco ASA is an application aware firewall that performs stateful inspection. In other words, when we perform inspection, we are going to be maintaining the information on a state table. Now the state information is handled by flows. Those flows are based on the source and destination address so as well as the ports and we can do the show connection command and we'll do that once we get into the basic step of the ASA. The ASA does have application inspection and control services very rich AIC feature. It also has IP routing capability. So we can do things like OSPF, EAGRP. We can do even do authentication with those. We can do RIP and we support BGP. So that's a lot of lot of lot of support here. Not only IP version, it also support IPv6. It also integrates natively with multicast network. So we can run an IGMP subnetwork. We can also integrate with PIM and do some multicast routing. Now, in addition, we have integrated DHCP capabilities. So if we wanted our ASA to act as a DHCP server for our clients, we could do that. And we also have the ability to be an a DHCP client so on our outside interface, maybe we want to be a DHCP client and we also support a number of NAT scenarios and we will get into that a little more but this is just a brief of some of the features that we have available to us in our Cisco ASA. Coming to the modes of deployment. Now our ASA device are going to be come default to what is called routed mode and a single mode. So we might say there in single routed mode they operate as a single device and they operate at layer 3 of the OSI model. So they have a different subnet on each interface. They might maintain a routing table. They can be involved in routing, running OSPF, EAGRP and such static routes and so on. And so that's the default. It's act as a layer 3 hop. An alternative to that would be one a transparent mode. So we could run a single transparent mode. Transparent mode changes the device to act like a layer to switch or a bridge or what some might call a bump in the wire. And so things are a little bit different when we operate at layer 2. We work with MAC addresses. We don't get involved in routing with the EIGRP, OSPF and those routing protocols. So that's a different. We are able to do filters on ARP and on MAC address. So that's give me some different visibility. But this would be a good solution, transparent mode. If you wanted to put firewall into a network that's already existing, the default gateway is already there. The clients already know who the gateway is. We could go ahead and install this and that would good to go wouldn't make any changes to the existing network. It would just create another bump in the wire. The other alternative is what called multiple context mode and multiple context mode is interesting. We will just illustrate it like this. We have the single ASA firewall and when we change the mode to operate on multiple context mode what happens is we take all of the system configuration anything that has to do with the hardware that kind of thing that becomes what's called the system execution space or the system config and we create additional context and context is the firewall configuration that deals with traffic passing through the interface. So we could have the system configuration and then we could have a virtual firewall essentially. A context which is operating in software and let's say, say this is called uh, context 1 or ctx1 and we would attach physical interfaces or 
allocate physical interfaces to that. So maybe we allocate G01 and G02 here. And so then we can make those the inside and outside interfaces. Now in the system configuration, you are going to have to bring each of those interfaces up. You are going to have to enable them. In the context itself, you are going to put IP address and it can operate as a transparent context. So still operating as layer two or it can operate as a routed context. So layer three, if, op if it operates as layer three, then it has routing table and it can do things like uh, NAT and modular policy. Things that we will talk about in a just little bit when we get little deeper into the firewall functionality. But essentially, we now have this context that operate as an independent firewall. Now, at the same time, this is called multiple context mode. So what we can do is we can have another context and maybe this context is called CTX2. And CTX2 is allocated different interfaces. So maybe the physical interface is there are 0, 03 and 04. And so then that can be the inside and outside interface. And in the system, we still need to bring those interfaces up. And in the context, we still have to give the IP address. And it will be on a different subnet as CTX1. Perhaps it would operate independently. They can share an interfaces. So the outside interface could be shared, but in this case, they're all different and they're all different subnet, that kind of thing. And we can have one person be an administrator of CTX2 and set their own policy and whatever else they want to do. And then we can have another administrator for CTX1 and they would see their own policies and perform their own configuration and they have their own sessions. And this would be operating independently. So it's kind of like virtualization. You might be thinking that kind of like virtualization in the fact that we have created this virtual firewall inside a physical hardware, but they're all sharing the same resources. And it's not like a hypervisor based virtualization, which we would see in ASAV, which is actually running as a virtual machine that's got dedicated memory and hard disk space and all the stuff. So they don't operate like that, but they need to give us the ability to run multiple firewalls or multiple context inside a single physical device. So those are our modes of deployment and depending on situation, we can change that around. We can go single router, which is the default. We could go single transparent, we could go multiple context more routed or we could go multiple context more transparent. And again, it's just going to depend on what is the goal of our deployment.